Hello everyone and welcome back to our inventory series. In this episode we're going to be tackling our save system for our inventory. So we can save and load our inventory contents at the start of the game and auto save it when we ever we change stuff inside of our inventory. So let's start, get started. So we're going to go through how to create the save system. Now if you've ever followed any of my save system series videos before, you'll see a lot of familiar things. Um, that's just because save systems are typically start off the same. But we'll to explain it as we go, but if you want to see if more in-depth stuff or other things about save systems, do check out those videos as well. So the main thing we're going to do is build a generic save system that our whole game would use, not just our inventory, but the whole game. And we'd create a new blueprint class and we'll search down here for save game object. There you go. And we'll call it save data. And we'll quit one player data. And you typically will have multiple save data files. You'll have one for the player, one for the levels, uh, for each level, and also one generic one for game settings, things like that. This one's just for player. And this is going to store information about the player's data. So in here, we're going to store information about the player's inventory. But on the variables, we're going to have a inventory content. And that's going to be a basically matching the content that we have here. So this F slot struct is going to be an array still on our save data. So we just search for F slot struct and make it an array. Okay, that's the most basic thing that you need. Now, we need the ability to read and write to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our inventory system and create a function to handle the saving and loading of our inventory. So let's go to our functions and do save inventory. And the whole purpose of saving inventory is to send over this content struct over to our saved data. Now the saved data hasn't been created yet. It depends on where you create this. Most of the time, you're gonna to wanna to create this in what's called the game instance. The reason why we choose the game instance is because the game instance is persistent. It doesn't get destroyed. Therefore, all the references it has, all the pointers it has, don't get destroyed either. So once you've done it once, you don't have to keep getting the save file and, and storing it again and again and again. So I'm going to create a game instance to handle this. So right click, blueprint class, and search for game instance. And set game instance. And we'll call this one. Um, yeah, what should we call it? Ryan game instance. There we go. And let's just fix that capital letter there. There we go. Um, and in this game instance, we're going to set up the uh, initialization of our save file. So we go to the functions override and do init. Init basically is the first ever function gets called when the game launches. So as soon as the game launches, it will do this. And we want to check whether a save game exists. Okay, does save game exist? And put in a slot name. And this will be um, my data, we'll call it. And put it into a branch. If that is true, we want to load it. So go load game from slot. And make sure that the slot name is the same. My data equals the same as this one, my data. And when you load the game from slot, you're going to get a generic save game object. You want to cast that to your particular save data. So this is save data, player data. And we'll promote that to a variable. Okay. If the game data um, doesn't exist, so it's got to create a new one. We're going to do create save game object. And choose my save data, player data. And we're going to then set that to our reference there. So either way, we're going to have a reference to our save player data. Let's start the game with a brand new one or an existing one. So now I've got that in my game instance. I want to make the game use this game instance. So I'm going to go to Edit, Project Settings. And in here, we're going to go to Maps and Modes. Down the bottom, you'll see Game Instance Class, and that's where you change it to your game instance. So Ryan Game Instance there. We'll now close that. And that's going to launch with that instead. So once we've created the save game data, one thing I like to do at the very start is save the game straight away. So save the slot and create the slot straight away. 
So on this save data, player data, I'm going to drag out and do save game to slot. And make sure the slot name is correct to my data. Same thing down here. Like so. So if I was to play this, it would create the save file no matter what we're doing, whether we're loading a new one or creating a new one. Um, and I'll show you where that is stored. So if I hit play, that's now created the save file. I can escape out from there. And if I just go to any of my folders down here and just right click and do show in Explorer. And then I can back my way up to uh, the root of the project and go to saved. You'll see save games. And there's my data.save. Okay, so that's where the save data is stored. So when you want to clear the data, just delete this file. But at the moment, it's empty, so we don't have to do that. So now we've got that set up, we're going to go back to our inventory component. And we're going to go to save inventory. We need to get hold of our save data. So we're going to go get game instance. Cast to Ryan game instance. And from there, we're going to get the save data. I can now set information from here. So we're going to do set inventory content. In my save data file and give it this content from the actual inventory system. That's getting sent over to that and then told to uh, store it. It hasn't saved it. So we have to take it to save and you do it by doing save game to slot. And you may be like, as soon as you call this function, you want to do it. Or you maybe when you hit a certain point, you want to do it. It's up to you when you want to do save game to slot. But we're going to take as player data. We're going to drag it over to there. And slot name will do my data. Okay. And that will save the game. Next, we want to load data. So I'm going to do load inventory. And it's going to be start off the same. We just do get game instance. And then cast to Ryan game instance. Plug that in. And then from there, you get save data. And this is going the other way around now. So I want to get, but not set, I want to get the content from here. And I want to feed that into this component's content. Okay, that's what I want to do. File and save. So load inventory is going to happen right at the start. So I'm going to go to my event graph and find my begin play up here. And I want to just do load inventory. I then want it to save it automatically every time we update the inventory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a binding of my inventory update. So I'm going to do Find inventory updated. And we're going to do a custom event. And we're going to do auto save inventory. And that's just going to call our save inventory. Okay. Like that. So let's take a look at that in action. I push play. And at the moment, I've got nothing in my inventory. And if I hit pick up, I pick up now. Oh, so the reason why it's breaking like that is because we've set it to the inventory content on the player character. Um, the content size, we need to resize it after we load it so i need to do load inventory start because the load inventory is overriding the resize and there load inventory resize that should do it so let's go in and pick up some apples first of all you see that i've got empty slots and now i should be able to pick them up and there's three apples in my inventory and if I now escape and load up again, ah, we don't see it. Now, the reason why we're not seeing it is because I'm guessing the 
this function isn't getting called, which means when I'm adding to inventory, I'm not calling inventory updated. So let's just go to add to inventory. Uh, yeah, see, I'm not, I'm not calling it at all. So what I want to do is um, we go through each one. Look, 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 and on here, we're going to do call inventory updated. When we add items to it, we're just updating our inventory. And that should do it. And now, go in again, empty slots, pick up oh, the apples, escape, go back in. The apples are still there, we'll come to that in a minute. Um, but now we've got three apples in our inventory, which I can, when I move it as well, it will save it. So it auto saves there. Escape, come out, go back in, and then now they're still. Okay, and if I drop them, that should also be saved. So I've hit play. It's saved that they've gone as well. Now you may have noticed that in the level, the apples aren't disappearing when I pick them up and they're not being stored that I've taken them. So we're going to go through that in the next part and talk about how to do levels of saving data. And that includes taking things away and adding them. So if I were to drop the items onto the floor, will it save those items? So more on that in the next part. And there we go. We've now got our object saving our inventory to our player data. But as you saw, the level doesn't save that data yet. So what we're going to do in the next episode is go through the process of creating a level save data, which will store information about what items have been dropped in where and what items have been picked up from where. You can watch the next episode right now on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady. We can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.